So now in this video, we're going to do another topic on choosing a resistor for a circuit. And so again, this is a very simple circuit, but the principles involved are involved in all circuits for the most part. So to begin with, we have a resistor in series with the LEDs right there. You can see the resistor. There are three different values. The resistor connects to the positive rail. Other side of the resistor connects to the long lead, the anode of an LED. LEDs are a type of diode. They only conduct in one direction. And so you need the long lead, the anode more positive, the short lead, the cathode more negative for it to conduct. We're going to be dealing and measuring with current. And uh, so we have it open from the cathode to this jumper down here. And so the last video we looked at, we saw that the resistor by itself, we have to worry about it overheating. And so this resistor up here, it's a 100 ohm resistor. It's actually too little resistance for this circuit. We'll look at it why coming up. But I want to point that out probably many times. 100 ohm resistor, we can put that directly across the rail. The 100 ohm resistor, we did that in the last video. We will get one watt of power based on the voltage. This is a five volt power supply. We have one watt of, or a quarter watt of power with a five volt power supply. I should uh, clarify that. That's with five volts. With different volts, you'll get a different wattage. But with five volts, 100 ohms of resistance, that's a quarter of watt of power it has to dissipate. That's its absolute maximum and it's actually twice as much as you want to dissipate. So 220 ohms, if it was 200 ohms, it would be an eighth of a watt, which is a, a good guideline to go by, an eighth of a watt or less of power. And so this would be slightly less when it's directly across the rail. So now we're adding LEDs, and they are actually gonna take some of the voltage off of the resistors, so the wattage won't be as bad. Now, let's, Set the meter to measure milliamps of current. Those are the two resistors we looked at in the last video. This resistor here is 150 ohms. And this is actually the about the resistance. I only have, you know, so many values of resistors. This kit that I have has a lot of values though. And and it's cheap. So the pins are a little thin. They don't go into the board as good. Plus, these resistors are supposed to have a 1% tolerance, which means you can expect them to be within 1% higher or lower than their rated value. I don't think they quite live up to that standard, but they're plenty good for my needs and for most people needs. So we have the meter set to measure milliamps. This meter, it only has one spot for the red probe unless you want to measure current in the amps. So we're milliamps and uh, we leave it there. So it's a pretty easy meter to use. I don't think it's sold anymore though, but uh, in any case we have it's set to measure milliamps, it will do the rest. And again, I uh, quickly did a little bit of calculating and this resistor is doing better than uh, I calculated. But again, I was estimating value of the uh, components. And uh, so the LED is blocking some of the voltage from the power supply and about 2.2 volts in that range. We uh, will probably look at that coming up but it's blocking about 2.2 volts. So there's less voltage across the resistor than five volts, probably about 2.8. And uh, this was the math I did earlier, probably about 2.8 volts across 150 ohms. And so I calculated like 18.7 milliamps or something. But again, that's really close to 20 milliamps. So that is about the maximum current you want to put through an LED is 20 milliamps. That's usually what is recommended. So now let's go to uh, this resistor and LED. This is a 220 ohm resistor. I commonly use that in my videos. And first off, there's a lot of kits that uh, provide a lot of 220 ohm resistors and stuff. It's a really common value. So the LED is not as bright. These are also LEDs I've been using a lot. So some of them are naturally brighter than others. Let's swap them out. And because that seems like more of a brightness difference than I would expect from that uh, current change, but I could be wrong. So I don't I don't do this all the time. But there you can see that's not as bright. I don't think as it that one was in the same spot. So in any case, here's another reason why I'm using. We're 
mostly focus on the current right now than the LED brightnesses. So if we were really focused on LED brightness, I would have taken some completely brand new ones. So we're going to look at this one because this is a 100 ohm resistor. We saw 150 limited it to 20 milliamps of current. So 100 ohms of resistance is not going to provide enough resistance to protect this LED. Too much current is going to flow through. So we're going to complete the circuit again. And there you can see 30 milliamps of current. And the LED starts conducting a little bit better as it warms up. So you're going to see that go up. That's another problem. As LEDs light up, they start conducting more. So we already have too much current going through it. And it's warming up, letting even more current go through it. But in any case, when it comes to protecting an LED from 5 volts of resistance, we just saw that 150 ohms works pretty well. Now, we saw in my last video that 220 ohms of resistance will, if we put it directly across the rail, we will have an eighth, a little less than an eighth of a watt of power to dissipate. And we want to keep it less than an eighth of a watt. So you may think, I don't want to use 150 ohms because that's more than an eighth of a watt. But the LED absorbs some of that voltage. There's less than 5 volts across the 150 ohm resistor. So in the next clip, we will look at how the LED influences the wattage that the resistor has to dissipate. And so now we're going to measure voltage. We don't have to put current through the meter now. In a sense, a tiny bit does only, though, to uh, get a sense of what the voltage is. So the uh, meter has a lot of resistance in it. You put a voltage across it, and based on what little current trickles through, it's a very large amount of resistance, so a very small amount of current, but it can get a sense of what the voltage is. And uh, read that off to you. So we have a resistor to the positive rail, to the anode, long lead to the LED, short lead, the cathode comes over here. So this LED works really well for uh, this circuit, and uh, we will look why. We'll set the meter to measure voltage again. With this particular meter, we can just leave the red probe there. Other ones you might have to shuffle where the red probe goes for current and voltage and stuff. This one's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. It's auto ranging, and so it makes things easier. So that's all I'm going to say about the meter for now. But right now, so we have the 150 ohm resistor and the LED. As we saw, that gave us pretty much spot on 20 milliamps of current. So we have two volts across the LED. So this LED is blocking, as far as the resistor is concerned, two volts from the power supply. So that's why there's a voltage built up across there. If we come over here, the rest of the power supply voltage, three volts, is across the resistor. And so now we have three volts across this resistor. That's what's setting the current. The LED blocks in about two volts in this case and so otherwise it conducts freely after it blocks that voltage so there's three volts across the resistor and because it's a five volt power supply minus two volts from the led three volts simple math you know and then so three volts divided by the 150 ohms of resistance is point or 0 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps same thing so that's that current that we measured before. Now that 20 milliamps, 0 0.02 amps times 3 volts across the resistor is 0 0.06 watts. And uh, so this is only 60 milliwatts of power this has to dissipate. That's because the voltage is low. If uh, we use higher voltages, the LED is still only going to block about 2 volts. I think though at higher voltages it's going to get closer to 2.2 volts. And I think that's why that number is running through my head. We're using lower voltage than when I've done these tests before. So that's other experiments you can do. But the main takeaway is higher voltages from the power supply is going to equal higher voltages across the resistor. They're going to stay about steady across the uh, LED. It doesn't change much. It changes a little bit with current. But for the most part, it stays within a small range. And uh, so the rest of the voltage goes across the resistor. So this video is only for 5 volts. 150 ohm resistor works really well for getting an LED pretty much spot on uh, 20 milliamps of current. And uh, so 
that was going to be the focus of this video selecting a resistor to give the LED that much current because these principles are involved in more complex uh, circuits too. So let's look at another problem. So as we saw that LED was blocking about 2 volts and pretty much spot on which was really nice that's why I used that. So this LED is not as bright and I probably abused it maybe they're just from different uh, kits or something I don't know but uh, there you can see there's less current or less voltage I mean built up across this LED so it's not 2 volts it's slightly less than 2 volts so we expect slightly more than 3 volts across the resistor and there you can see there's more voltage across the resistor so there's actually a little bit more current going through the resistor and LED right now and uh, so this one is going to be about the same because I already measured them and uh, so even though these are a little less bright that's because for whatever reason they're just naturally less bright I, I may damage them so we got 5 volts at the power supply and again about 1.9 volts across the LED so we'll have slightly more than 3.1 volts across the resistor which uh, oops across the resistor there we go which uh, doesn't make the math as easy as 3 volts so that's why I did the math with that one but ultimately you have to do the math and uh, it's important to uh, get a baseline understanding of what the current's going to be and again this applies to more complex circuits and so learning it with these simple circuits is going to quickly translate to the more complex circuits how much flow current is flowing based on component voltage drop and uh, resistor resistance to uh, set the uh, current based on the power supply voltage so again be careful going with higher voltages try to do the math first just estimate LEDs are going to block about 2 volts the rest of the voltage is going to go across the resistor you got to make sure it doesn't exceed the power rating so I touched on that in the last video but in any case I don't want to throw too much into this video and uh, so I'm going to cut it off here hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, it helps you so thanks for watching I will see you in the next video